The graphics are way better than they were last year. Um, you'll definitely notice improvement whether you're playing on the PC or the console. This Marquee Dragon video is sponsored by Shattered Crystal, game codes and items. Hello, I'm Marky Dragon, also known as Marcus Eikenberry in real life, from MarkyDragon.com, and today I've got... David Silverman. David! How you doing? I'm so horrible at names, I apologize. It's alright. But I do remember you're the producer, right? That's right. You're the president of the company. No, I was kidding. That far. Yeah. So, we're talking Dragon Age, Dragon Age 2. Dragon Age 2. Careful with that. So, I played Dragon Age, the original one. Okay. I loved it. Thank you. What are we gonna what are we gonna what are we to expect with Dragon Age 2? So with Dragon Age 2 what the team really wanted to do is we needed to make sure that we improved upon the things that people like you loved about Origins and fixed the things that maybe were a little bit broken. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of research, we looked at the fan feedback, went on our own forums, believe it or not, and read the press feedback and we found out that there's three key areas where all of kind of the complaints sort of went into. So we wanted to make sure that we were improving on those things and those became our primary areas of focus and, and uh, improvement. The first area had to do with the graphics. So we've done a lot of graphical improvements on the technical side. We're actually giving the game a very kind of cohesive art direction now. So wherever you look in the game, it's going to look and feel like Dragon Age 2. And as a result, the graphics are way better than they were last year. Um, you'll definitely notice improvement whether you're playing on the PC or the console. Really happy about that. The second area had to do with the combat. People like being able to think strategically, so we maintain that. You're still going to be able to think like a general, pause the game if you want, but now when you go into combat, you're going to be fighting like a Spartan. So you're diving into the heart of battle, you're going to be wielding your weapons, you know, as you were there, feeling like you're in the front lines actually fighting the enemies rather than watching from the sidelines. So it's that really kind of, uh, we call it the button awesome connection now, where every time you press a button, something awesome happens. You're making me very nervous with that thing, you know. <laughs> uh, see, now you're really screwed. Um, so that's really the key thing there in combat, you know, really making it action-oriented, playing very much like an action RPG, but still giving you the freedom to pause and think strategically should you choose to. And then finally, it's really a matter of uh, the story and changing how we tell the story. So we added player VO to make the game more cinematic, so no longer are you going to kind of see this really engaging VO sequence when people are battling about something, they're like, what do you think? And you're like... You know, you don't have to worry about that anymore. It's more cinematic with the player viewings, whether you're male or female. And then also we're changing our storytelling mechanic and creating more of a frame to narrative, which gives you um a story that's telling another story, which allows us to cover a much wider span of history. The game Dragon Age 2 spans 10 years now, an entire decade, as opposed to only about a year to year and a half, which is what Dragon Age Origins could tell. And then also you're going to notice that the game is much more reactive. It's the most responsive game that Bioware has made today. So, um... I think it sounds like we're looking for more of the same, uh, you know, of the, of the greatness of the first one. And how does, um, how will player-generated content make it into this? Because in, in the first one, players were able to make some of their own content, weren't they? So we did have an end-user tool set uh, in Dragon Age Origins. For Dragon Age 2, we're still exploring how that works out, and mm -hmm. we'll talk more about that and, and all that later. You decide whether or not you want people to be able to mod their clothes off? <laughs> well, you know, people are going to mod regardless of whether we yeah. give them a tool set or not. So that's yeah. something that, you know, PC gamers are always, you know, that's, that's their nature. So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we don't need to make a dedicated tool set for them to figure out how to, you know, hack the game. Yeah, I know. I, I saw some pretty incredible hacks in the first one. So, and it was actually quite good. But, uh, so what is, um, I, I'm assuming your inspiration behind doing a sequel is the first one. But is there, is there anything else that, that inspired you that you're adding into well, the game? When we started out with Dragon Age Origins, we didn't want to just create one game, right? We were really okay. out to create our own universe. We wanted to go and, you know, for, for the past several years, Bioware was, you know, taking kind of licensed properties from Dungeons & Dragons, right? We're getting the Dungeons & Dragons rights and making games based off of that. And with Dragon Age, we really wanted to set out to make our own fantasy fiction, right? We didn't want to just kind of borrow from someone else. We wanted to create our own universe, which is where Dragon Age was born. So, Dragon Age is Bioware's dark fantasy universe. It's kind of our own version of, say, Lord of the Rings, if you want to. And really, we're out to make much more than just one game or a couple games. It's a giant you know, franchise that we really want to bring and branch out into different mediums. You've already seen things like comic books and, and uh, novels and, uh, you know, games is just a piece of that. So really, we hope that Dragon Age can keep expanding and becoming bigger and bigger. And a large part of that is because of all the support from you and all the fans out there. Yeah, so, uh, when do we have any sort of relationship? release dates or, or goals? So Dragon Age 2 comes out March 8th on the Xbox 360, the PS3, and the PC. Okay. 
I'll be there. All right. <laughs> yeah, so can you tell me, let's, we're going to change the tone here just a little bit. All right. Ha have you had any oh shit moments in the development of the game? Well, I mean, you know, every development product or cycle always has kind of certain challenges and whatnot. But really, I mean, 90% of the team is working on Dragon Age Origins, is working on Dragon Age 2. So the team is really close to working together. We know how each other operates. It's a very streamlined pipeline. The tools are based on, you know, an improvements over what we've done before. We've already gotten Origins out there, so a lot of kind of the learning curve and hurdles have been kind of worked Feels through. Polished, it's though. a much more streamlined yeah. approach. The team is fantastic. Um, you know, really, we're in our stride right now, and uh, you know, I think you know, really, it's been great. So, what's the number one thing that excites you about uh, the next game coming? For me, it really has to do with the combat. I mean, the story was fantastic in Origins. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so obviously, I think the frame narrative definitely helps to tell that in an even better way, especially with the player VO and whatnot. But the combat is really something that we wanted to improve on. You know, we didn't want people to kind of plot out their attacks and then watch them happen. We want you now to be able to participate and really feel like you're in the heart of battle and really kind of get that much more connected to the character. Yeah, this sounds awesome. Sweet. So, March 8th? March 8th. Okay, we'll be there. All right. Thanks a lot.